الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله listen to this beautiful supplication of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم which is easy for us to learn and hopefully when I get back we can take time write it out and and so that we we can memorize this and it will be of greater benefit and even go into detail but since we're out here in the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation we just want to be brief and try to gain some benefits and a reminder as a reminder benefits the believer so this is a supplication of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam regarding suffering when you're suffering from something something is some ailment or some trial or tribulation so listen to this and we'll listen to what some ahla hadith how they explain this how they what and their experience so the hadith of uh, abu uh, ibn abbas radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma he reported that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to supplicate with this supplication during times of suffering the prophet so he would say there is no de- deity worthy of worship besides allah la ilaha illallah the great the forbearing there is no deity worthy of worship besides Allah, the Lord of the great throne. There is no w- deity worthy of worship, the Lord of the heavens, the Lord of the earth, the Lord of the noble throne. Which goes, La ilaha illallah al azim al halim. La ilaha illallah rabbul arsh al azim. La ilaha illallah rabbul samawati wa rabbul ardi wa rabbul arsh al kareem. So in this beautiful supplication of the Prophet ﷺ, as we see with all the supplications of the Prophet ﷺ, and this shows us the importance of Tawheed. Why is it that people commit shirk in their supplication? How is it you could supplicate to Abdul Qadir al-Jilani? How is it you could supplicate to uh, you know, all these Sufi uh, saints? How is it you could supplicate to Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, or the Prophet ﷺ? And, and those people can't help you. Anything that can help you. How is that? How is it that someone can say La ilaha illallah, but then they go right to shirk, shirk al-akbar? This is amazing. It's an amazingly tragic affair. So we see that uh, the Prophet ﷺ began the dua, of course, with tawheed. La ilaha illallah. There is no God worthy of worship except Allah. That right there, that affirms tawheed. It affirms the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he's the only one. Mustahik lili bada. He's the only one worthy of worship. And it negates... Shirk, it negates directing that worship to the dead, to the saints, to your living sheikh, by looking at your phone and his picture and crying, uh, looking at this, looking at that, saying that whoever enters the the the, the uh, presence of so-and-so, he's guaranteed paradise. Where does this battle come from? How can they ascribe this to Islam? And what amazes me is people who revert from disbelief and they come to Islam and they go to, to that. They go to that. How? How? Because they didn't learn Tawheed. That's the important thing. We can't underestimate the importance of Tawheed. Tawheed al-Ibadah. And the ni'mah of having learned uh, from Ahl sunnah Who exalt Tawheed. Listen to the ex- explanation of this. Ibn Battal, rahimahullah ta'ala, said about this. He said, Abu Bakr al-Razi informed me saying, I was in Asbahan with Shaykh Abu Naim. And was transmitting and writing hadith from him. There was also another shaykh present known as Abu Bakr ibn Ali and was pivotal in giving religious verdicts. Some of the area began to envy him. So some of the people began to envy this scholar, you know, this faqih. Some of the people began to envy him and oppressed him when with the ruler. So they would call the ruler and say, so-and-so is deviant, so-and-so is this, you know, imprison him, harm him, causing the ruler to imprison him. Subhanallah. This was during the month of Ramadan. So I saw the Prophet ﷺ in a dream. And Jibreel, may Allah exalt his mention, was to his right, moving his lips tirelessly in the glorification of Allah. The Prophet ﷺ told him, Tell Abu Bakr ibn Ali to supplicate using the supplication of suffering and distress that is in, the, in Sahih al-Bukhari. So Allah the Exalted removed his distress. Then the next morning when I awoke, I went to him and I told him of the dream. He said the supplication and after a short while he was removed from prison. So this supplication contains the fact that the Prophet ﷺ witnessed that the book 
of Al-Bukhari is authentic, and this was in the presence of Jibreel. May Allah exalt his mention, and shaitan does not appear in the image of the Prophet wasallam in dreams. Look at that. This is how some of the Salihin, some of the Salaf al you know, their experience with practicing, because they had immense taqwa. They practiced and applied the deen. They supplicated to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these supplications, and they believed in it. They had yaqeen, whereas we... A lot of times we don't even memorize it anyway, or we don't even supplicate. And if we do, we're mutaraddid. We're always shaky. You know, we're fickle. We're quick changing. Well, you know, maybe Allah's not going to answer it. Well, you know, maybe this, you know, maybe I need to ask this one and this one to, to help me and supplicate for me instead. You know, we're, we're, we're always looking for a way out instead of going to Allah Azza wa Jalla. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with uh, ikhlas, with thabat, wa uh, being perfect in our isti'ana, with istighatha. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we, we, we seek these things we seek the help and support and assistance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during stress and during ease may Allah help us may Allah bless us may Allah guide us may Allah forgive us wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam